Hello everybody. Today I'm moving on to doing the piston rings now. So I'll just zoom into the drawing and we'll take a look at these rings. Here they are and in this book that I'm working to it doesn't give you any information at all about piston rings only to say that the one and a half inch by one eighth cast iron. So I've applied my logic to this and because the piston grooves are an eighth wide and an eighth deep and in the write-up it tells you to allow a little bit of clearance on that, a few thou. I've assumed that the rings are going to be an eighth wide and, and an eighth thick on the radial thickness. So I've made, been on my lathe and made a ring up. That's some cast iron and here it is. And you may not be able to uh, get the full effect of this on video, but that ring, one eighth by one eighth, is very very rigid and I know it's got to be annealed yet I know all that but I did actually make two and I've tried to wedge it open to the percentage that I need and it just snapped so it may be the cast iron or it may be just that I'm doing something wrong so I've I've investigated further and I've got a write-up out the model engineer which were done in 1994 and it's and it's a very in-depth write-up about making piston rings and if you want to take a look at them they're the issues that it was in if you want to take them issue numbers and the dates that when they were done right well in this in-depth explanation on how to make piston rings in my eyes you can basically forget it because I like to keep things simple and I'm only a beginner at this and I haven't got all the equipment here to do all the normalizing and etc etc and the, the testing the, of the uh, pressures that's going to be forced onto the bore etc I'm trying to keep things simple so I've been to my local module, model engineering society and I've spoke to a couple of well established engineers, they're in their 80s, Peter and Brian, and they've given me some good advice. And I'm doing it I'm doing it wrong. I, I, I'm actually doing it wrong. I don't want to be making a piston ring like I've done with the wall radial thickness on the wall that thick. Peter told me to go maximum of 1 16th. The actual width, the axial width doesn't matter, it's the radial width that matters if you want to be successful. Steam is going to go behind the piston rings and force the rings onto the bore. So they've, they've assured me, and I'm going what they say, make the rings different. But there may be other methods to do this taking their advice because they're experienced and I'm going to do it their way so watch this space
You can see the difference from what I from the one I made earlier. They're the same axial width, but the radial width is only half as much. So I've got to split them now. And because I may make future rings, I've made a little device for splitting them. You've no need to do that. Over on Miller machine, it only took me well, less than half an hour probably after a bit, scrap bit of aluminium and I've put two pieces of tool steel ground to a ground to a point. You've got to make sure that that point meets in the middle. Then there's a, a slot going across it for the ring to sit in and then two screws at the end just to just to clamp it. So how I'm doing this then and we might as well do it now while I'm doing it. What I've done I've I've ground a junior axaw blade to a few thousandths of an inch thick, put the ring in my milling vise and I've just nicked the inside of the ring there. You might not be able to even see that. That's just to so it fractures on that line then. Then what you have to do, you just put put your ring up with, with that line on the point of your tool just line it up onto that onto them two points there and then just to stop the tool still rising up as I'm screwing in screwing the screws in I, I'm just putting my thumb over it just to keep everything in place and once you've took the slack up till it pings clean straight cut then what you've got to do is just file the roughness of the of the edges just a minute let me get that in there that's it it really should be done in vice this but just take just square them up, square them edges up where it's broke like so then once I've annealed them I'm going to put them in my, in my bore of my cylinders and then make that gap three thousandths but I'm not doing that just yet not make your little brass wedge up to the thickness that you want to expand the ring and make it as small as you can so it's not taking the heat from the ring and then uh, carefully put the wedge into the ring and just slide it up very gently till you're on the full width that you need like so then just flatten it off I've gone the, the route that them two model engineers at my engineering society told me to do it then it's going to go flat onto a fire brick and we'll move over to vice now and I'll, I'll show you how I'm going to anneal it Right, so I've set some fire bricks up on my vise and I'm going to rest, rest my piston ring on a, on a very flat fire brick with the, with the brass wedging 
in that corner there and I'm going to pack some fire brick round it I want to keep the heat in that little pocket because you're supposed to normalize these and you need a crucible furnace to do that at a constant temperature uh, for a set, set amount of time and uh, well I've not got that so I'm keep, trying to keep things simple so what I'm going to do I'm going to I'm going to heat that up to a dull red so it's completely dull red all around I'm just going to let that cool down naturally now. Right, that's the that's the wedge dropped out now and giving me 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 gap me appropriate gap. I'm just cleaning it up with a little bit of brass hole. I've also sand uh, emery cloth them down to width 125 That's it Just check for now. No, that won't go in. So that's three thousandths. Right, I'm ready for putting it on the piston now. I think we'll have a little bit of oil on. That's it. Try to bore. Right, I've just got to uh, fit the other piston ring to that. Then do the other one. Then uh, that's completed and I can move on to my valve next.
Yeah, I'm happy with that. So, I'll catch you on my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.